All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us on another one of our departmental deep dives tonight. We are concentrating on our medical imaging program, one of our the more unique programs that we have at Bloomsburg. Also one of the more unique majors probably that any college or university would offer. Um, it's an outstanding program. We've been really excited for this event tonight. Um, I am flanked by some of our best and brightest um, from the program or adjacent to the program that will be able to speak about what your experience would be like in the medical imaging program. Um, but before we go any further, let's kick it off with some introductions and we can start with Dr. Venditti. Greetings. My name is Dr. Venditti. I am the Allied Health Coordinator and Professor in the Department of Biological and Allied Health Sciences at Bloomsburg University. And I work very closely with our medical imaging students, both teaching some of the courses that you are required to take and helping you through your clinical application process, and then helping you while you are out in your clinical program. And Dr. Vindy, how long have you been at Bloomsburg? I have been at Bloomsburg University since the fall of 2010. Fall of 2010. Yeah, I okay. think this is my 12th year. I'm also a BU alum. <laughs> oh, I know that. Yeah. Okay, 2009, I'm assuming, 2008, probably. Um, 2008. 2008? Uh, no, 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 yes, yes. Yes, okay, <laughs> nice. Excellent, excellent. And what are your areas of research, Dr. Venditti? My research area is reproductive biology, specifically andrology, and I study sperm-associated proteins. Sure. And, and andrology, I mean, I know what that is, but I want to make sure you know what that is. Andrology <laughs> would be what? That is the, the male reproductive tract. So I gotcha. have been studying okay. sperm cells for a very long time, almost two decades now. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Venditti. Uh, Dr. Sure. Hess. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Hess. I am a professor and chair of the Department of Biological and Allied Health Sciences. I have also been heavily involved in the medical imaging program at Bloomsburg University since my arrival. Um, I advise medical imaging students, I teach medical imaging students, and then I also help coordinate our medical imaging internship program, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Great, and, and Dr. Hess, how long have you been at Bloomsburg? Uh, I came in the fall of 2007, so I've been here. This is my 15th year. <laughs> 15th year, and I'm an mm -hmm. alum of 2005. I'm yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not a BU alum. I did start my undergraduate education at Bloomsburg <laughs> University, but then I finished it at another very large state institution. <laughs> right down the road from us, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, in the center of the state. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, Nittany Lion or something is the yes, mask. Yes, a Nittany Lion, yes. <laughs> um, great, thank you, Dr. Hess. Uh, Mr. Rosel. Good evening. My name is uh, Ken Rosel. I'm the program director for the Geisinger School of Medic of Radiologic Technology. I have been involved in medicine since high school days, 1990 or 78, no, six, <laughs> six, six 19, 68, graduated 1969. I've been with Geisinger since 1981, and I like Bloomsburg so much, I went twice, bachelor's degree and master's degree. And we appreciate and we that. Very, what's that? And we appreciate that. <laughs> oh, yeah, all good professors. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage anyone to consider Bloomsburg over everyone else because of the professors. Uh, I, Geisinger is separate from Bloomsburg, where we are two separate institutions, but we have a very close working relationship, and you'll hear about that later. And it, it's safe to say, so the the nature of your role, Mr. Russell, is um, when our students are doing their clinical rotations in the medical imaging program, they would, you would be the person that they would be working with. We take 10 students a year. Okay. And so most of ap our applicants are BU students. Sure. So we will take uh, 10 of the many that BU has, but students can go elsewhere. And uh, I encourage them to consider a number of clinical sites when it comes time to look for their last two years to find the school right. that best fits them. Sure. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Rossell. And uh, 
last but certainly certainly not least, uh, Paige Fennessy. Paige, do you mind introducing yourself? Hi, my name is Paige Fennessy, and I'm currently a junior here at Bloomsburg studying medical imaging. Right, and where are you from, Paige? I'm like 40 minutes south of Philly. I'm on the border of Maryland, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. Okay, all right, great, yeah. great. All right, well, everybody, thank you so much. The event, um, just so everyone knows, this is being recorded. Um, we'll be posting a recording uh, later tonight. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them on the Facebook post. I would be more than happy to get them to uh, to our panelists here. This is a great opportunity for you to ask questions. It's not often that um, we have two of the faculty members, the clinical director, and a current student in a room together. So this is a great opportunity again for you to get your questions answered kind of on the spot. Um, We'd be happy to answer any, any, any questions that, that you have about the program. We're gonna start with a presentation um, from the team and then we are going to transition to a, a panel discussion um, among everybody just to can try to you know pull the curtain back a little bit so everyone can see what, what the medical imaging program, what it has to offer. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start the presentation here. Bear with me just one second. Okay. Can you guys um, see my? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Sure. So we're going to start with, with the coursework. So uh, Dr. Venditti, I know this is one of the subjects um, that raises a lot of questions for prospective students because they're not taking a lot of these courses in high school. So some of these things might be kind of foreign. Um, can you talk a little bit about the coursework and in particular what the two plus two and the three plus one mean? Sure. At Bloomsburg University, uh, we, ha we have a really good medical imaging program. And we've been doing this for a really long time, since the 1970s, and we're really good at it. So you should really consider our program. We do offer a bachelor's degree, um, which can open some doors for you in the future. If you are thinking about going on to a graduate program or becoming a practice manager or becoming a clinical instructor, if you come to Bloomsburg University and you complete our medical imaging degree program, you will earn a bachelor's degree right from the start. Within that bachelor's degree, we have two pathways or two options for you. We have what's called our two plus two pathway and our three plus one pathway. For the two plus two pathway, what that means is that you are at Bloomsburg University for your first two years, completing your required core coursework. So the courses that are required for your major. And there are some listed on the, on the bottom of this slide. We'll talk about those courses in just a moment. But for those first two years, you're completing your core requirements. You are completing your general education requirements. Then you will attend an accredited clinical program that is at least 22 months in length. And that's what makes up the last two of the two plus two. Once you've completed your BU requirements in your first two years, you go off to that clinical program that is at least 22 months in length. You successfully complete that clinical program. The clinical credits that you earn are then transferred back to Bloomsburg University. They are reviewed by me, and then we can use those to satisfy the remainder of your degree requirements, and Bloomsburg University grant grants the bachelor's degree in medical imaging. The two plus two pathway tends to fit the radiography program. So if you're thinking about RT or radiography, a program such as Geisinger, their School of Radiologic Technology, uh, follows our two plus two pathway. That's the first option. The second option is our three plus one. And that means that for your first three years, you're at Bloomsburg University, again, doing the same thing that the students in the two plus two were doing, completing their core degree requirements, completing their general education requirements, 
But then in, in the three plus one program, you're going to complete an extra block of 15 credits. And those 15 credits can come from what we call a science emphasis area, where you will take five additional science-based courses, or they can come from a management emphasis area, where you will take an additional five courses that are related to business and, and management. So if you're thinking about, no, maybe you're interested in the business aspect of healthcare, then maybe the management uh, uh, emphasis area would, would be a good fit for you. Once you complete, again, those general education requirements, the core requirements, your emphasis area requirements, you are then attending an accredited clinical program that can run anywhere from 12 to 18 months in length, depending upon the clinical site and the program. Those programs tend to be for sonography, uh, nuclear medicine, technology, those, those types of programs. There are a few short radiography programs, um, but those are the programs that fall into our three plus one pathway. Okay, so two options. Again, both of them culminating in earning the bachelor's degree, the, the BS in medical imaging. So, and so Dr. Venditti, with, with the way this would work then, so students would then, they would do either their two or their three years at Bloomsburg, and then they would apply to a clinical program offsite or at, at another, at a hospital network. What are some of the locations where students have done their clinical rotations at? Our medical imaging students are encouraged to apply to at least five different clinical programs. Mm -hmm. And one of the other really nice things about our degree is that you can attend pretty much any accredited clinical program. So if it's JR CERT accredited or KHEP accredited, which are two really big accrediting bodies um, in the medical imaging field, um, we can, for the most part, make those programs work. So you'll apply to at least five, and our students have gone to a variety of locations. As Mr. Rosal mentioned a little earlier, we have about you know, 10 students every year who are going to Geisinger School of Radiologic Technology, which is just a few miles down the road. Um, it's, it's always a top choice for our students. We also have students who go to the York area, Lancaster, yeah. Philadelphia. We have students who go to Baltimore, Maryland, mm -hmm. to Johns Hopkins. They are also one of our clinical affiliates. We have had students um, attend programs in New Jersey. So there's a pretty wide uh, array of programs that our students have attended. So how do students pick? So you, you recommend that they apply to five. How do students come up with their list of five? What kind of factors go into that? It is they want to stay close to home, whether they're looking to specialize in something and this hospital is known for that. Like what goes into that decision process? There, there are a lot of factors for students to consider and we get our medical imaging majors thinking about that from their very first semester as a freshman when they take their one credit freshman seminar course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They will start talking about clinical programs and they'll learn about the websites where they can go and find accredited clinical programs. Mm -hmm. And then from those websites, they can read about individual programs and look at things such as what types of facilities do they have to offer, sure what technologies, what programs, what modalities are offered, um, what, what types of clinical rotations might be possible. Sure. Some students, you know, certainly look in a specific geographic location. Maybe they mm -hmm. want to stay close to home or mm -hmm. they really like the Bloomsburg area when they get here. And so they're looking for programs that are nearby. Sure. As they get closer, um, to their application process. I host a seminar for all of our medical imaging majors where we walk through the how to apply to clinical programs. And I talk about what are the application materials that you need to be getting together? How should you put together your resume? How do you write a cover letter? Where do you go to find accredited programs? And then I always show them a list of here are all the clinical programs where our students from 
last application cycle were accepted and are, are now attending. Interesting. I, I would just say, I would just say I would, if I could jump in for a moment, Paige is actually in the process of applying for clinical programs. So maybe she, so happens. She's not to put her on the spot, but maybe she has a couple things or ideas or suggestions. Like, how did you choose the programs you chose to apply to? Um, so as you said, you wanted us to apply to five just so we can get more options. Um, so I kind of chose to apply to some that were close to up here. I chose some that were close to home. Um, the price was definitely also like a factor. There were some that were like crazy expensive. And then there were some that were way more reasonable. Um, yeah, and that's really it. So Paige, have you and started- I mean, the program's reputation. I mean, the program, so they all have like acceptance um, percentages and you obviously wanna to go to the best program that has great acceptance rates and, or not great acceptance rates, but great outcomes. Geisinger has great outcomes. So that's where everyone <laughs> usually tries to get into. <laughs> Um, so you're definitely trying to look at the outcome rates and you want to go somewhere that has a great program. Paige. Yeah. You know that we hire our senior students to work as technologists as well. That's right. And that's a, such a great opportunity. You get to be a student tech and you get to work almost your entire senior year as a tech. Almost and the same, same income. <laughs> yes, almost. It's very close. <laughs> Mr. Russell, how, how competitive um, is the admission into the Geisinger clinical rotation or the clinical program? Very competitive. Okay. Um, both, sorry, but... both academic, but also the other qualities that we look for. And in, in general, your experience um, with Bloomsburg applicants um, I'm assuming you probably see a good amount of applicants from BU each year. Um, I would imagine it's probably safe to say that you've had good success with Bloomsburg students. Otherwise, you probably would not have agreed to, to serve on this panel. Um, <laughs> talk a little bit about some of the things that you like about the Bloomsburg program and why you seek out BU students. Well, I have the best students in the whole wide world because of Bloomsburg. <laughs> and we look for the best of the best that come from Bloomsburg. And they are going to be working with patients practically on their first day. And they're gonna be in the clinic representing Geisinger. So we look for individuals who are gonna be professional from the first day, mm -hmm. outgoing and be involved, ask questions, be responsible. And so that's what we're looking for during the interview. We can have people who have great grades, but if they do not have the people skills, mm -hmm. they're not gonna get into our program. So I would encourage any listener here in high school, for example, to work on a resume in, in a way that they can show that they've been part of a team. You, know, you could be a musician on theater, on the football field, something that helps you develop interpersonal skills mm -hmm. that are necessary in the medical field. And we will interview students up to five hours. Other places will see you for 15 minutes. Yeah. You spend the whole day with us. We wine and dine you. We want the best student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's that's great to hear that. It's, I guess, in the medical field, they would call it something like bedside manner, right? Is is kind of like the social fabric of how, mm -hmm. you know, healthcare professionals work with patients. Um, as someone who has two kids and has spent time, you know, at, at, at Geisinger with, you know, with, you know, having two kids and the whole bit, um, that kind of thing, really, it, it makes a big, big difference. And it's really, it's hard to quantify that. Um, but that is something that we see pretty consistently across the board with a lot of our Bloomsburg students, because just the type of campus experience it is, where it is traditional, where you are um, involved with other things. And it's a very different experience from high school. So you have this opportunity to kind of grow up, right? You have this unique option for two, three, four years to grow up a little bit as you kind of learn to stand on your feet. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, that, that. That's great news. And Mr. Russell, if you keep this up, you might find yourself on a billboard somewhere. We, we appreciate <laughs> all, all, all the kind uh, comments and, and accolades. Thank you very much. Um, Paige, when will you start to hear back then um, about your clinicals then? 
Probably around January and February, I think, okay. are when interviews are held. And then sure. after that, we should find out shortly after if we got accepted or not. Right, right. Okay, well, hey, well, good luck. We're, Thank we're, you. Well, hopefully you, you'll find your way right down the road to-, to I hope so. <laughs> um, so Dr. Venditti, would you mind talking a little bit more about, about the coursework then? Um, you know, again, these are not classes that your average high school student is gonna be taking. Um, and honestly, most high schools probably are not going to offer courses as unique as these. So what are some of the things that they might be learning about or how would it differ from just your traditional biology course? Like what are, what are some of the things that they're going to be doing in the classroom for those two or three years that they're with us? If, if you look at the list of courses that's on the screen and the first three courses, Concepts in Biology 1, Anatomy and Physiology 1 and 2, those, those are the first courses in the sequence for the majors. Um, I teach concepts in biology one. So if you come to Bloomsburg University as a medical imaging major, get ready to have fun in biology. Okay, we'll, we'll be there together. Uh, Dr. Hess teaches anatomy and physiology one and two. And I think one of the biggest differences for these courses with, with respect to high school is that these are four credit college courses, which means that you will be in lecture with us for three hours per week. But you will also be in a laboratory for three hours a week doing hands-on activities and hands-on experiments where you have the opportunity to apply what you've been learning in lecture in a hands-on setting. Lecture is, is fun, but, but lab is really cool and really, really fun as well because you get to get your hands dirty. Okay, so we, we do experiments, uh, we look at a lot of, we do a lot of microscopy, uh, dissections, a lot of really, really fun stuff. When you get to anatomy and physiology, get to those bones and muscles, um, it, it's really fun, right? And Paige, um, you, you've gone through all of these courses? Right, I'm in my last semester here at Bloom, it's kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually just had my first in-person lab for the first time this year, which was interesting. So it's much better to be in person than it was online. It's a lot different, but I love lab. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> and honestly, in, in Paige, I, I love to hear your input on this, but I know for a lot of prospective students considering any clinical or any science-based programs, one of the, the biggest benefits of going to Bloomsburg is you're not going to be stuck in a lecture hall the size of a football stadium, right? You're going to be in a, in a smaller class. And I know this is a phrase that's on every college brochure in America, small class size is specialized faculty attention. That is certainly true in this instance at Bloomsburg. Um, and I, you're going to get to use a lot of the instrumentation that you might not get to use at some of these other larger name brand institutions. And your courses will be taught by Dr. Venditti and Dr. Hess, as opposed to a grad assistant or a teaching right. assistant. So the undergraduate experience is, is really kind of the primary highlight here, um, as opposed to at a larger school where it might be the emphasis is more on a graduate level education and PhD programs. Here, kind of you're the star as, as an undergrad student. Um, what was your selection process like? I'm assuming you probably applied to multiple schools. How did Bloomsburg end up on your list and why did you end up deciding to go to BU? Well, um, price was definitely like, I didn't want to come out with the debt. So I wanted to stay like in state, state mm -hmm. school. And obviously there's still so many options. Um, I really liked the smaller schools. You know, I, like I thought about Westchester, it's too close to home. And I don't know, it's, it's a little too big. I mean, it's a little bigger than Bloom, but um, I visited campus and I absolutely loved it. Like it's a great campus. And I heard such great things about like the professors, especially in the allied health department, they're great. Um, and the class sizes are awesome. So I didn't visit in winter though. I didn't know it was gonna be this cold. <laughs> right, yes. Right, yeah. Uh, maybe we don't talk about that. Maybe yeah. we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah, it's, cool. it's, 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 it's a balmy 65 degrees out there in winter. <laughs> No, so that, that, that's really interesting, Paige. And so did you know that you wanted to major in medical imaging at that point in your high school I career? I didn't. I'm probably more of the um, most, un, not most fun, but um, I'm probably more of the untraditional side of medical imaging because I did come in undecided and then okay. I switched into the program later on. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it is kind of a harder major to switch into just because it is a two and two program. So it's like on a tight schedule, you need to get all your core classes in and gen eds before your clinicals. Sure. Um, so if you do switch into it, it's common that you may have to take an extra semester. Um, but I always knew I wanna do something in the medical field. Uh, I just, I was in between a lot and there was, there's so many great majors here but I was ultimately drawn towards the technology and it's almost used in every part of the hospital. It's just crazy. So, all right. So this is a, a really interesting topic and I know that we're going on a sidebar here and I apologize. We will weave back in, into the plan. <laughs> um, so you chose medical imaging and you chose that over some of the other options, right? Whether that be pre-PA, pre-med, biochemistry, nursing, speech, right? You had, a, I mean, the, one of the things that puts us on the map of Williamsburg is our health profession pro, or pre-health um, profession programs. Um, how did you settle on medical imaging versus the other options that went into your decision? Well, so I actually had a spinal fusion a couple years ago and okay. I was, I had like a ton of x-rays and a sure. lot of fun stuff, a lot of MRIs. Um, right. So I, like, even then I was like 16 when it happened and it was yeah. like, the coolest thing even just like sitting in the little it's awesome yeah yeah was so, like, so you had some, technology is amazing right so you had some some personal experience in with, right. with what the career might be interesting okay all right well you seem to be doing better now that, that that's, that's right. good <laughs> that. okay interesting great thank you Paige um Dr. Venditti Dr. Hess anything else to add about the the curriculum I just want to say that there are some high schools that do offer anatomy and physiology to their students. And, and there are even some that offer medical terminology, you know, and even though, you know, we don't accept those as, you know, we don't accept transfer credits or things like that at the imaging program. I mean, those are great courses to take if you have, if you have the opportunity in high school, whether you're thinking medical imaging or anything related to an allied health profession or even pre-med. Um, I recommend that you take those courses in high school and just get that first initial exposure to these topics, because, you know, having taught anatomy and physiology, you know, for gosh, it's been 10 or 12 years now. I mean, I think the students who come in with even just a little bit of background preparation, you know, they do, they do better than students who come in fresh, you know, having had had any sort of exposure to human anatomy or physiology um, in that way. So, so if you are at a high school that offers these programs, um, definitely take advantage of that um, because I do think it's a benefit for you. Not, you don't have to do it, but if it's there, um, I think it's certainly helpful. Yeah, there's a big difference between high school classes and college classes, and I think that's obvious, but it's hard to tell how big the gap is until you're sitting in that college, you know, your first year of courses, and you're like, holy cow, I'm swimming in the deep end now, right? Yes. Um, yes. So the more diligent you are about appropriately selecting your senior year coursework, it will pay off, right? And your GPA might be a, a little bit lower because you took the tougher courses. You're going to have to work a little bit harder than you thought you might have to your senior year, but it will pay dividends and delayed gratification because when you get to your first year classes, you're going to be so much more prepared and it's not going to feel like you're drinking from a water, a, a, a fire hydrant, water hydrant, fire hydrant, I think. Um, because that's what we want to avoid. Yes, definitely. That, that, that's great advice. That's good admissions advice too, because one of the things we pay attention to is not just the GPA. We're going to look at the courses you took, right? And for a competitive program like medical imaging, you know, we'll get way more applicants versus what we have room for. Um, right. And that's one of the things we're going to look at. Yep, that's that's great advice. Okay. So what makes a good student then, Dr. Venditti? What are some things, and, and Dr. Hess, and, and even Mr. Russell and Paige, what are some things that you believe that as a prospective high school student who's watching this video right now, um, they're probably considering a variety of different programs. What are some things that they could look at, concrete things that are like, oh, you know what, I like those three things. Maybe this is a field I need to consider. Dr. Venditti. I think we've we've heard a little bit of this weaved throughout the presentation so far with respect to, you know, when, when you're going to go into one of these professional fields, it's it's not just about academics, but it's it's the total package, right? It's yes, you need to have good academics, but you also need to be able to interact with patients because you'll have to do that on, on a daily basis. Um, Paige, what, what are some of the things that maybe 
you could share with with a student thinking about medical imaging that's helped you excel as a medical imaging major? I would definitely say um, the professors here, they are super willing to help you succeed and they offer so many great things. So like they've able, they will extend their office hours. They'll go over your exams. There's so many great things that are offered and they yeah, want to page. Yeah. What is able? It is the academic biology learning environment. Environment. Yes. That's okay. Right. You got it. it. <laughs> yep. So yep. it's actually in Columbia Hall and there's grad assistants there. There's grad students. I think Dr. Hess is there and you can go there with any questions and they'll answer anything. And you can go over material on your exam, even if it's like the day of or the day like tomorrow. Yeah, it's great. Great. Thing. We also have a lot of like, we have a lot of models like skeletons and muscle models and eyeballs and ears and hearts <laughs> and lungs and digestive, everything that they have in the AMP laboratories. We yeah. sort of do like a lot of the models we duplicate at ABLE. Uh, same thing with Concepts in Biology 1. And so it's an additional academic support service that we provide for our majors um, enrolled in these courses so that they can access lab materials in another place outside of lab. And it's, as Paige mentioned, it's in Columbia Hall, which is a residence hall. And so it's it's where the students, a lot of our medical imaging students will reside in the first year or so of their, of their undergraduate education. So it's a great opportunity. In the in the learning community, the health professional learning community, yes. I think you call yes. it excellent. Yes. So health it seems like what, one of the things that you need is a strong stomach. Uh, hearing <laughs> Dr. Hess, what you, it, it was like an instant reminder of like, yeah, this is why this is not the right field for me. It's, no, they're all plastic models. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Even just the thought though, it's like, oh man, I'm, yeah, I don't have the stomach for that. I'm 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 too soft for that. So okay. <laughs> Paige, anything else that that you can look back in your experience? Maybe it was a course you took in high school. Maybe it was a project you worked on um, that that might have you you were able to kind of glean something from them, and like that was the initial indicator that you know that was the right field. I did end up taking AMP. It was like a super accelerated, super brief in my last year of high school. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. This is definitely what I want to do. And that's why I was like, there's so much in the medical field. And I was kind of overwhelmed because there, there really is a lot. Um, all I knew is I want to do something in the medical field. And there's so many great majors here. So sure. I know. And, and um, you know, really pre-med gets a lot of the attention. Um, Dr. Hess, maybe earmuffs um, and, and good reason we we need as many doctors as we possibly can as we can get right but the reality is there's a lot of other things that you can do that are adjacent to you know the the main career of being a doctor or being a nurse is the other primary option and at bloomsburg we, we have a lot of those academic programs that would prepare you for that um you can make a, a, a huge impact um and again they're there but they are very similar in terms of the curriculum and the outcomes and the things that you're going to be doing in your career. So, all right, great. Thank you. Um, Dr. Hess, do you, do you have any, um, anything concrete or even, you know, Mr. Russell, anything that you would think that as a younger person that you're looking at, that you're like, okay, you've done these things, you're interested in these subjects or these topics, you like to do this when you're outside of class, what are some of the things that you would think would be a good notification as that this is a, the, the right field? Well, I think for me, I mean, I think students need to be, you know, they need to have a little bit of grit, right? So you have to be able to get down, get, you know, get back up when you get knocked out. And we've talked about this in some of these other Facebook Live things we did with the pre-medical sciences program, you know, that, you know, if you have a bad ex a test score, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you need to regroup and try a different method. Um, and then that's where we as professors are here to help guide our students, you know, through, through that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. so that if a test doesn't go well in say concepts in biology one, you go talk to Dr. Venditti about it, you know, and talk about how you, how you approached, you know, preparing for the exam and, you know, the person who wrote the exam can definitely tell you how best to prepare for it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what we are. That's what we do at BU. You know, we're here to help our students pick themselves back up and keep going because with anything, you know, you're probably going to stumble and that's okay. Um, but it's just being able to, to get back up, you know, and keep going. Um, but I would love to hear what Mr. Rosel's thoughts are too about a good student because he has our students in his clinical program. <laughs> well, I have a couple thoughts and 
considering that there may be young people out there who are in high school, and I'm going back in my thoughts to 1960 or before, <laughs> and I would think about college and not think it was for me because there were so many hard courses. So don't look at the list. Become dedicated to your choice. Fall in love with what you want to do. Yeah. I fell in love with x-ray and I went from, a, I would say, a very low C student and in college, 3.0 and above, just because I found something I wanted to do and I strove to achieve. So don't be discouraged by looking at the list of things you need to do. You will do it because you want to when you find the thing that gives you the drive. Uh, but also, Dr. Hess is very right. It's a real world out there. You must expect some disappointments getting a 92 and not a 98. Uh, <laughs> or I'll have students who come to us from Bloomsburg having two years. And I'll find that even, they even find our first semester very hard because it's different. They're in the clinic. They're working with the mm -hmm. technologist. They have the responsibility of beginning to, to perform procedures. And it is a different world. And again, they have to get their feet on the ground and get going and it takes grit. I like that. <laughs> but I do not lose students. I have a very unique program. I've only lost three students since we reopened in 2004. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and that is highly unusual. We have a 99% retention rate because we pick students who, like Paige, are determined to be in this business. <laughs> and we are there to help, just like Bloomsburg University professors are there to help. And, and so in Dr. Hess and, and, and Ken, you, you made good points there where, again, it goes back to having smaller classes and getting to know your faculty because that the social fabric is important. Now, the problem is it's really hard to quantify how important it is. That's our job in admissions and marketing. Try to be like, all right, well, how, how, how could we explain this? And, you know, hearing you say that, because for a lot of the students that go into this field, they're probably like, Paige, I'm assuming you were probably a pretty good student in high school, right? That's safe to say. I wasn't as good as I am now. Okay. Um, it's kind of like what Mr. Rosal said. I found what I really liked. And then once I actually declared my major, my like grade skyrocketed basically. Yes. So and, and that's good I really advice. Like and my if I had to venture, I guess I would say you're probably being somewhat humble, right? Because I see a lot of the credentials of the students who go into medical MJ, AGPA, um, you know, strong math and science grades. Um, they're used to doing really well. And right. then you get to college and you get in the, the medical imaging program at Bloomsburg and you hit AMP one, right? Or you hit organic chem, right? Or hit some of these other courses that frankly are really difficult. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how smart you are, but didn't matter how well you did in high school. Those are gonna be hard for everybody. And um, sometimes there are gonna be some moments where you're gonna hit a low point where it's like, oh wow, I'm not used to this. And if you don't have the muscle memory of how to kind of like pick yourself up off the mat. It can be hard learning that. I mean, that, that's a, that's a skill. Um, yeah, I think you're absolutely right though, Dr. Hess. And that, that's, that's a great point. Yeah. Really good point. Um, excellent. So those are some of the things that you might want to be considering if you're currently in high school right now, but a big part of this is that is the, the professional experience, right? We've talked a lot about the medical imaging internship. Um, Dr. Venditti, do you, do you have anything to add then about what students might be doing during their internship? So, so I'll take that yeah. one because oh, yes. I coordinate the, I work with Mr. Rosal very closely to coordinate the medical imaging internship program. Um, and so an internship is not the same as your clinical program. The clinical program is a two-year program as Dr. Venditti uh, described or, or 12 to 18 months, depending on your modality. The internship is a course that you sign, that you can, that you can do while you're still an undergraduate at Bloomsburg University. Our internships are three credits. You earn three, three credits of this. It does count in the science emphasis area for students who need to complete that because they are choosing a clinic, a shorter clinical uh, program. Um, it is competitive. Um, you do have to apply and you do have to interview for the internship. Mr. Arousal has worked really diligently to help increase the number of interns that we can accept 
each year when I first started getting involved in the internship program, uh, it was probably about nine or eight years ago or something like that. I think at the time we maybe only had 12 spots um, and that was for out the fall, spring and summer. But we're out, up to, gosh, Mr. Ross, we've had 50, I think 50 interns in a single year, almost. Yep. If I can fill every single slot, I could probably take care of all of your students. Yeah. Because what happens is Geisinger has increased in the number of facilities, and I go out and recruit hospitals around the Geisinger system to accept students. So that's how I have increased the number. Yeah, so we have, so now, you know, instead of just being able to send students to the Danville campus, um, or to the Bloomsburg Hospital, we send students to Shemokin, we send students to Susquehanna Valley Imaging in Lewisburg, we've sent students out to Graceswood in State College, um, Jer Jersey Shore Hospital, Lewistown, uh, the Community Medical Center up in Scranton, Geisinger, Wyoming Valley. <laughs> so, so there's a lot. Wow. Mr. Rosal and I have made some road trips to visit the different sites and talk to the technologists uh, about the internship program. Um, Paige has just finished her internship uh, for this semester, and she really did a fantastic job. Um, so, she, so she actually went more than 120 hours. Um, mm -hmm. There were some times in her journal each week that she stayed late just because she wanted to see how, how a case <laughs> ended up that she was there. And that's really fantastic. Um, but the internship opportunity really gives our medical imaging students a leg up in the clinical application process. Uh, because by the time they, you know, when they complete this internship then, and then they go and complete that application and interview process for a clinical program, you know, they've spent 120 hours uh, with medical tech, with imaging technologists in the healthcare system, maybe in a large hospital like the Danville, or maybe in an outpatient clinic like Susquehanna Valley Imaging. They've seen CT, they've seen MRI, they've spent time in ultrasonography, they've done fluoroscopy, interventional, diagnostic, all of these things. <clears throat> So they can really talk about the profession. Um, and so, you know, this, and this also helps Mr. Rosal uh, with his choices <laughs> of students for his clinical program, uh, because he's had an opportunity to work with our students for, you know, 15 weeks in a regular semester or the shorter winter session or, or, or summer sessions um, as they've come through uh, the Geisinger, the Geisinger network. Um, and so Paige, this is your opportunity to tell us a little bit about your internship experience and sort of how it's helped you. Right, so as Dr. Hess was saying, I had my internship this fall and I was super thankful to have mine before I applied to cl clinicals. It was just like the cherry on top, just like this is what you wanna be doing. And this is definitely what I wanna be doing. Um, so I'd spend my mornings here at Bloomsburg, I take my classes in the morning and then I'd like run over to Geisinger Medical Center in Danville. I'd spend maybe like four hours there each day, but it's so nice because we get to schedule ourselves and we kind of get to work around our own schedules as long as we complete the required 120 hours. And honestly, it was like the best part of my day. So like, I'd want to be there. I'd probably rather be there than be in classes. <laughs> but no offense, Dr. Hess, Dr. Mendy. No, I, I get it. <laughs> it's great. It's such a great opportunity <laughs> because, because it is a two a plus two program. You don't go into clinicals knowing much about X-ray. You know a lot about like anatomy. Um, but it was super great to see like what it's going to be like in clinicals. I got to know a lot of the clinical students. I got to know Mr. Rosal. I got to know a lot of the techs and see what their day is like. And I got to help out, and it was great. Paige, so you're in that with um, a group of other students and where, what other schools were the students coming from who, who might have been at your internship? It was only BU students for the internship, but there okay. were um, there were other clinical students, I think, from Penn Tech. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was all the Geisinger students. Sure. Oh, very cool. Very cool. What, what are, out of curiosity, basically, what are some of the things you're doing? You show up, you check in, like what, what are some of the tasks that, that you are responsible for as an intern? Um, at first, it was definitely a lot of observing because I was brand new. But as like the time went on, I was able to get more comfortable and I was able to like go help and go get patients. I could bring them back. I would help like assist them. Um, if they need moving, I would help them do that. And then as I got more comfortable towards the end, the text would actually let me like help and help position or show me how to position everything. And okay. I got to learn a lot. So it's helped me so much 
getting ready to get into clinicals. Favorite part about the internship? Oh, goodness. Um, I really enjoy spending time in radiation therapy. I know Mr. Ross will probably doesn't want to hear that, <laughs> but I also really like CT. So there's so many different modalities and I love how versatile the medical imaging career is. There's so many things to do. So the first thing you said was radiation therapy, radiation therapy. That's right. Which would be what? So I would go to RT school first, and okay. then you can do an additional year. Mr. Rosal unfortunately loses some students after RT school to the radiation therapy program. So, but in radiation, but radiation therapy, like what? What I guess what is the feel? Like what? What is that? You are um, giving the treatment to cancer patients. You're giving the radiation. Okay. So it's a different form of medical imaging. Can I sure. Jump in? Yes, please I, do. Yeah. Uh, the medical imaging career is fantastic in that it can give an individual so many different opportunities to match their personality. I can imagine Paige would be very good in radiation therapy because she would see the same patient day after day and get to know them where other people wouldn't quite crave that type of interaction. And there is a place for them somewhere in medical imaging. So medical imaging allows you to match your interest, your personality to the career. That's I'm awesome. happy when my students decide to move on to something else after two years. <laughs> if they fall in love with therapy, I am so happy for them and I'll do everything I can to help them get into that school with recommendations and paperwork and such. I lose about two students, I shouldn't say lose from radiology, but on average, two of our students move on to therapy, which means they're very dedicated because right now it's a small field and they're going because they want to do it no matter what. And again, talk about a field where you are unquestionably making a huge impact. I mean, like very frontline, making an impact on someone's life who, who needs the help at that point. Yeah, that's... I think in every way in this career, whether you spend five minutes with someone, if they walk away after that experience and they feel they have been genuinely helped by another human being, that's mm -hmm. a plus. Whether or yep. an hour or how, how long it is, you touch thousands and thousands of lives in your career. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's such a great point, Mr. Ross. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, and then Paige, the other one, I, I have no, it went right over my head. The, the other one was CT, CT, which is computed tomography. Okay. Tomography. And, and that would prepare you to do like what kind of career then? Um, it would be, so CT tech is, you would have to get a special certification, I believe, and it's on-site training after RT. So it's, you get to learn right there. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of traumas come in. So they'll come in, they okay. usually go straight to CT and they kind of do the work up and everything. So okay. it was super exciting to see all of that. It's, it was different. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Great. Yeah. That, that those are great answers. Yes. So, and I think, yeah, the big takeaway here is, is really what Mr. Russell said is that there's a lot of variability in the careers where it can, you know, honestly, for, as an outsider, I would just figured it would prepare you to do this one thing. Right. Uh, now that one thing is in high demand, which is good. I, I would have never guessed that you have all these other career options that are embedded within the field. So that's really, really interesting. That's good to know. I appreciate that. It, it used um, to be too. Well, Tom, let me just jump in before you, before yeah, sure. you go back. So, yeah, just go back one second. So mm -hmm. it used to be that a lot of our medical imaging majors would complete job shadowing experiences. Um, but since the pandemic, many hospitals don't permit students to do job shadows. So a lot of our medical imaging majors now, you know, they're aware of the field, but they really don't know much about it. And so that's another place where this internship really helps students, um, you know, realize what the medical imaging profession is. And it is, it's not always just taking x-rays, right? Um, there's, there's so many other things to it. And I'll be honest, they're, they're on occasion, we've had one or two, you know, that will do their internship and decide that medical imaging is actually not for them. Um, and then they decide maybe nursing is better, or maybe I really wanna be the doctor and they switch to pre-med. 
um, and or they switch to pre-PA. And so here's the great thing is that if you come in as a medical imaging major and you do your medical imaging internship and you decide, you know what, I think I'd rather be a physician assistant, you can move right over to our health sciences degree and you're really not losing much time on your degree because many of the same courses that you take as a medical imaging major in those first couple of years, mm -hmm. our health science students are taking those also. Really? Yes. Um, and same thing with pre-med. Um, you could even sure. switch to the BS biology pre-med um, and many of the classes you've taken will, will count uh, towards that degree or, or in some other way towards that degree. Um, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Right. And so I think it's, you know, I think it's important to mention that, you know, should a student come in all gung ho about medical imaging and then decide after an internship, maybe not, it's okay. We, there are backup plans. <laughs> that's <laughs> honestly, and that's good to know because yeah. with a lot of these, again, even from my own edification here, like you always hear about the stories of like a student who will, yeah, very, very rarely, um, will get through their three and a half years as an education major, get the student teaching and they be like, oh, this might not be what I want to do. But at that point, like, what are you going to do, right? You kind of yeah. have to see it through and then, you know, reevaluate afterwards. Um, so that's really good to know, though, that you've got some, again, some variability with what you can do if you decide that, you know, this might not be exactly what I want to do. And it just so happens we have those programs at Bloomsburg. So it's not even like you're looking to transfer to another school. Right. You might just be looking at switching a major within the same college, within the same department, possibly. So um, that's really good. Yeah, that's good to know. I feel like I'm learning a lot tonight, too. So I, I appreciate that. <laughs> This, um, this this career is such that you really don't you do not know where you'll end up. Yeah. You think you will be simply taking X-rays the rest of your life. You do not realize someday you'll be a program director. Someday be a physician assistant. Three of my graduates are. One of my graduates is now directing the neuroscience at Geisinger. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. And it just goes on. Now Paige might get into CT and then think, oh, I want 3D imaging. And mm -hmm. she'll make really 3D cool. models. Now mm -hmm. we are going towards the fact the point where Geisinger will be able to 3D produce the exact hip to replace the bone by making the device instead of buying it. So who knows where we're going to go from there? Yeah. Holy cow! Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's nice to know that you're not putting all your eggs in the one basket, right? It's probably the simplest way to say it. Right. Um, and that's good to know. Yeah. As, as a prospective student, as a parent, supportive of a prospective student who's looking at this field that, that for me as a parent, that would make me feel better knowing that there's some other options that can branch out. And even when you get into the field, you might find that, you know, I like this subspecialty a little more. I'm going to go in that direction. Um, so that's great. So I know we already kind of talked about some of the career paths here. Did, did anyone else have anything to add on, on the career options? Optionality? No? Okay. So job outlook. Um, it seems like across the country, nationally, regionally, um, people who work in the healthcare professions are just in, in demand, right? And there are obvious ones, nursing, um, anyone who's going to be a PA or a doctor, like you always hear about the demand. Um, Mr. Russell, could you speak a little bit about the demand in the region, maybe in the area um, for people who graduate with a medical imaging degree? This is an, a very exciting time for someone to pick the career because we're at a point where there are not enough of us whether you're a nurse, respiratory therapist, technologist, whoever. Um, and it, way, it comes and goes over the decades. But I believe you should feel, find a career that you fall in love with and you will go through the career and survive. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you flexibility. You don't want to live in this part of the country, you can move to another part of the country. I have one student who is working on becoming a traveler. So every 13 weeks she would be hired someplace else to see the country. Um, mm -hmm. But for the job outlook, it is very good. Right now at Geisinger, we have eight slots waiting to be filled. We just do not have people around to fill them. Sure. Fortunately, we do have a school and in June and July, we should have some people available. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Paige could go to England and work. She could go to mm -hmm. Australia to work, Canada. Right anywhere in the country. Right. Uh, this is such a versatile career in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Yes, so again, it's nice to know that when you graduate, 
you're, 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 you're going to get a job, right? Uh, because your college degree, it's, it's an investment, right? It's not free. Um, so that, that's probably the best kind of paradigm way, you're, you know, method of, of, from which to view it. So, I mean, this is, this is a good investment is again, probably the best way to say it. this is a good investment. If these, if this is a field that you're interested in, like Mr. Russell and Dr. S had mentioned, if, if this is what you're interested in, this is a great investment in, in your future. Um, now, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stop sharing real quick here. Um, so that was the presentation. Now, what I forgot to mention at the beginning of the presentation is that this is part one. There will be a part two that will feature strictly a student panel um, that will be coming in in the winter. Um, we know this is easily one of our most popular majors. So we wanted to make sure um, we gave enough time to presenting the program, which frankly is very unique um, compared to just about any other program we have. And honestly, just about any other program that any other college is going to offer as well, that we could clearly articulate what the program is. Part two of this will be then the panel discussion with students. Um, so anyone who is tuning into this right now, I sincerely hope you will join us for part two. Um, as soon as we're done with this, we're, we're going to start working on dates and times for when uh, the panel discussion would, will, will be happening. You will likely see Paige um, again. Um, <laughs> A little bit of a super side. We might not be able to afford Paige, frankly, after, after <laughs> her performance tonight. Um, but there will be a part two. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to contact us. Um, we work for you and we're happy to do so. So anything we can do, I'll, I'll drop my contact information um, on the Facebook post. Um, really appreciate everyone. I know I'm, I'm trying to uh, keep it to around an hour. I know everyone who's watching right now probably has other activities that, that they're waiting to get to. Um, we look forward to, to hearing from everybody in the future. Um, any parting advice, Dr. Venditti, Dr. Hess, Mr. Russell, Page? any parting advice for students watching? I have discovered YouTube. And I would say go to YouTube and look for all the videos and what it's like to be a student. A lot of students make oh, those yeah. videos yeah. and they'll tell you what's expected. And I'm so pleased to see their comments match what my expectations are. Your uniform showing up on time. So check out from students their YouTubes on how to succeed. Yes. That's great advice. Yeah, we, we do a lot of the for different purposes, but we do a lot of those videos as well. And the idea is, you know, basically people want to see what it's like. OK, so like after you shoot the commercial, like what's it really like? Um, and you're going to get, you know, a very honest answer um, and depiction from from current students. I think that's great advice. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Anybody else? I think you I think you have to like to problem solve in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of problem solving that goes on in the clinic. Um, when trying to position a patient that maybe isn't mobile, mm -hmm. um, trying to get that x-ray just right so that the doctor can read it and interpret it appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be somewhat, you know, you have to kind of like those types of challenges um, when it comes to critical thinking and problem solving and, and uh, things like that. Right, great. Thank you, Dr. S. Mm -hmm. Dr. Venditti, Page. I definitely agree with Dr. Hess. I mean, especially in my internship, no day was alike. I mean, every day was different. Even if it was like the same patient, it was so different. Um, so it definitely varies patient to patient. And you have to be really good at problem solving. And, you know, you just have to be flexible sometimes and sure. see what works best in the situation. Right. Great. Thank you, Paige. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I can hear my kids off in the background right now. I think they're, they're about at the the time limit that they can stay quiet and behave for. Um, so really appreciate it. Look forward to hearing from everybody in the future. Um, and like I said, the, um, the part two will be posting promotion for here in a little bit, but um, thank you everybody. Have a wonderful night and, and have a happy holidays. Thank you for inviting me. Yep. Bye.